Greetings to you. Welcome to physics class. Today's video will concentrate on series circuit containing resistor, inductor, and also a capacitor. I'd like you to watch the other videos we did on circuit containing only a resistor, a capacitor, and inductor, and then combination of the resistor and capacitor, or an inductor and capacitor as well. So let's also begin. We have a diagram like this, our circuit diagram drawn this way. This is our resistor. Our resistor with resistance R connected in series with an inductor. This is the coil. With an inductor of inductance L connected in series with a capacitor with capacitance C and then down here here is our AC source and so here we call the voltage across the resistor VR Voltage across the resistor VR, then voltage across the inductor VL, and then voltage across the capacitor C, V subscript C. So let's demarcate something like this, something like this. So this is what we have. I guess we are going to go. So this is it. Now, if you recall in our previous lesson, we said that a circuit that is that contains only a resistor, the voltage and the currents they vibrate and they are in the same place, meaning they attain their maximum, minimum, and zero value at the same time, or rather they vibrate at the same frequency. We also said that a circuit that contains only a, an inductor, L, makes the current and the voltage to vibrate and be out of phase. Meaning the current and the voltage, they vibrate and they reach, and they reach their maximum zero values and minimum values at different time intervals. Likewise, what happens to circuit that contains only a capacitor, that the, 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 the voltage uh, and the current, they vibrate, they are, they are out of phase and they reach their maximum mid zero values and minimum at different time interval. Likewise, what happened again is that they here the current lead. The current lead in the voltage in the circuit containing only a capacitor and here the voltage leads. Now here in the circuit that contains RLC, the same current will flow through the same circuits. The current will be in phase with the voltage here and the currents and the voltage will be out of phase here and here. So let's draw a phasor diagram quickly or vector diagram to deduce the equation that we're going to be using in today's video. So what happens is what you have this is your phasor diagram. I call it your phasor. Phasor or vector. Vector diagram for I for I and V in series series AC circuits containing R L and C. So this is what you have here. And here you go. 
so let's write here is your voltage across the inductor L and the inductive reactance L. Here is your voltage across the capacitor C and the capacitive reactance XC. Then here you have you have your voltage across the resistor R, the current. They will be in phase and so they will, they will be in step, they will flow in one direction. <laughs> then here you have your you have your your face angle. Then you see how something like this. So from Pythagoras theory, you know that. Here you have your VL minus X minus V minus VC. You know that vectors when vectors are acting in opposite direction, you have to subtract. So you also have your your XL minus your XC. That is what you have here. The same thing here. You also have your and God is well. You also have your VL on this side, VL minus your VC, and your XL minus your XC. Up here you have your VR and comma your I. The same thing, you can claim this, you can bring it to your VR and your I. It's here, so it will be the step. So let's move on. From the above, we can write the following equations you may likely meet in this topic. So, let's begin. Number one, the current, the voltage that will flow through the circuit, that is V, as a function of T, will be given as V, V naught, sine omega T, which is congruent to V as a function of T is equal to V naught sine 2 pi F T. You can call this your equation number one. And then the current, the instantaneous current that will flow through the circuit is given as V I is equal to I naught sine omega t which is congruent to i into i not is equal to i not sine 2 pi f t you can call this your equation number two so from pythagoras theory you know that here is the effective voltage in the circuit which is the same thing as I Z. Z is the impedance in the circuit. What do we mean by impedance? Impedance is the overall opposition to the flow of AC. In an AC circuit caused by a resistor, an inductor, a capacitor, or both of them. So it's given as Z. So we write that from V is equal to IR, let's call this I equation star. We know that the voltage, that is V naught, is equal to I naught Z from this equation. So our, our peak voltage is equal to the peak current times the impedance in the circuit. So we write this as equation number three. So we can move on again and say this is the, 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 the current that will flow through the entire circuit. And so we write again that the voltage across, the voltage across the resistor R will be given as I times R. Let's call this equation number four. And also the voltage that the flow through the inductor, the VL, be given as IXL, IXL. 
We call this equation number five. Also, the voltage that will flow through the capacitor C is given as I X C. You call this I X C. Call this equation number six. Let's move on. We are not done yet. We said that I V naught is equal to I naught Z. So let us find from Pythagoras theory the total voltage that will flow through that will pass, that will flow through the circuit. So our total voltage is V from Pythagoras theory V square is equal to V R plus bracket V L minus V C all square. Squared as well. So you can call this your equation number seven. If you can make V the subject of the formula, you will have V is equal to the root of VR square plus bracket VL minus VC all square. You can call this your equation number eight. Is that all? That is not all. We want to look at this. From here, we can make I not the subject of the formula. So we have that our, our I not is equal to I not is equal to V V not over Z. You call this your equation number number what number nine. What is Z? Z is defined as the impedance in the circuit. And so Z is given as X, Z is equal to what? R, that is R square from here, you have your R square plus bracket XL minus XC square. We call this your equation number 10. It seems we got to claim this to be able to write all these equations here. So let's clean this quickly. So that is equation number 10. So we write again that uh, Z is equal to the, the roots of R squared plus bracket XL minus XC all square. Recall, recall that your XL is equal to omega L, which is equal to as 2 pi FL. And also your XC is equal to 1 all over omega C, which is the same thing as 1 all over 2 pi FC. So substituting this, the two of this into this equation gives us Z is equal to the root of R squared plus bracket XL, that is 2 pi FL minus 1 all over 2 pi FC omega squared. So this is equation number 10, we can call this equation number 11, equation number 11. Is that all? I don't think so, that's not all. So let's move on to write down the equation number 12. So that is the impedance A in the circuit. So we can write again that the total current that flow to the circuit will be given as your I0 is equal to your V naught all over the whole of this since Z. Since Z is equal to this, you can write your roots R squared plus bracket 2 pi FL minus 1 all over 2 pi FC all squared. All square. All square. And that become our equation.
question number 12. Is that all? I don't think that is all. How about the, the first angle? The first angle in, in, this, in this topic from this equation is given as what? It's given as tan, tan phi. Tan phi means opposite over adjacent, right? Opposite over adjacent. Don't forget, here we also have our R here. Opposite over adjacent. So what do you mean by that? So it's your tan or tan phi here is given as VL minus VC all over what? All over VR. All over VR. Which is the same thing as what? Your XL minus your XC. All over what? Your R. Mind you, XL minus XC is what we call the effective reactance in the circuit. An effective reactance X is given as XL minus XC. And so you can, we can rewrite that this is the same thing as X all over R. And so we can say therefore that the that tan, not that tan, tan phi is equal to what? X all over R. So if you want to make phi the subject of the equation, this implies that your phi is equal to the tan inverse of x all over r. And so this is the, the equation for the face angle con uh, for a circuit containing a resistor and reductor and also a capacitor. I believe these are the equations you need to know in this topic. When next we meet here, we shall be looking at how to use these equations to solve a whole lot of questions. We're looking at uh, the power in, in series AC circuit and also the resonance in our next video. Thank you and stay blessed.